you, you read the Bible and Jesus makes some incredible statements. One of those we're going to look at today where he says this, he says, ask anything in my name, I will do it. That's a, that's a pretty incredible statement, right? Well, when you hear that statement, do you, do you take that statement seriously? I mean, it sounds good. It sounds pretty powerful. Like, that's a fantastic promise. We can ask anything in his name, like anything, and he'll do it. Anything. That's, that's just incredible. We can ask anything that we want, and Jesus will do it. He's obligated to give us exactly what we want. Sounds good, right? But is that really what he means? In today's message, I'm going to try to help us to understand that Jesus is not delivering a magical formula for us to get whatever it is that we want. But he's wanting to give us like a, 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 a guidance here, some, some guidelines, some, uh, just some principles to help align our desires with God's desires. Prayer, it's a, it's a tricky thing. Right? Sometimes we, we pray and, and we see God move. Other times we pray and it's like, hold on a minute, is there any, anybody listening? You know, it's really, it's really tricky. Maybe you're here today and you've, you've prayed, you've asked God something. You may have even prayed in Jesus' name and um, it's like he's not listening. It's, it's, it's like he doesn't even care. If that's you... I hope that today's message will speak to you. Uh, if you're new to the lift, this is the modern worship service of First Baptist Indian Trail. And we are delighted that you're here. We, uh, our, our staff and our dream team, we would love to meet you. We would, we would love to pray with you. We would love to minister to you in any way that we can. I mean, we, we really do. Um, we're so glad that you're here. This is one of the things that we say about the lift. Is it's, it's a place where it's okay to not be okay. Like there's a lot of not okay people. I'm looking at them. It's just not okay to stay that way. Um, those of you that are joining us on the other side of a screen right now, you are special to us. You, you're not just a number to us. Like we, you really matter. And I hope that you'll hang in here with us. Um, we love you and we want to connect up with you as well. That's why we have hosts that are experiencing church the same way that you're experiencing it from the other side of a screen. And so take a time and, and, and connect with us. In, in the chat rooms, connect with us. Let us know where you're watching from. Uh, reach out if you've got prayer requests and want someone to connect with you and pray with you. Reach out to our host. They're there. They're there for you. So um, we, we just want you to know we're glad that you're a part of, of our church today. We're in week number two of a series that we, we started last week. The Bible didn't say that. And today's um, message, I've entitled it this. If you're taking notes, you can write this title down. Switch from your will to his. And you'll understand a little bit more about what I, I mean by that as we go on. But oftentimes, especially when we pray... It's, it's all about our will, our will, okay, instead of it being his will. And, uh, man, it it's really gets really tricky when we're in a verse like we are in today where Jesus said it. And we, we know from Scripture anything Jesus said, it, it's, it's like that's truth, right? That if he said it, it must be true. And, and so let's just real quick, let's look at today's verse. It's found in John chapter 14. It's, it's two verses, verses 13 and 14. And this is what Jesus said. These are, uh, it's in red in my Bible. It's probably in red in yours. That means Jesus said it. All right, and this is what Scripture says. Jesus said this, whatever you ask in my name, I will do it. That's, that's pretty powerful. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. Now, if you're like me, I read that verse and I go, oh, hold on. Hold on. Anything? Anything? Like, Jesus, I can ask you to, you know, that, that, that good-looking girl that's, you know, in science class with me, I, I wanna, I'm going to ask her to prom. So she's going to say yes? She's never talked to me before, like all year long. 
But I'm, Jesus, I'm asking you in your name that she will say yes. I mean, does that mean, like, can I just pray that? And, and she's going to do, you know, she's going to say yes. She can't say no. She's obligated to go with me. Get, do I just, like, I, I want that raise. I know, Jesus, I've only been on the job for three weeks. But please, in Jesus' name, give me that $10 an hour raise, please, Jesus. I mean, can we do that? Can we ask him those kinds of things and he actually do it? That's kind of what it sounds like, right? My birthday's coming up, Jesus. I'm tired of driving this, this you know, eight-year-old car, 10-year-old car. It's time for a new one. Give me a new car. I want a new Ford Bronco, Jesus. And I pray it in Jesus' name. Sounds good. Sounds good, but is that really what he means? If you were with us last week, we talked about understanding Scripture. How is it that we're understanding Scripture? We're going through a series where we're taking some very popular Bible verses, Bible verses that we all like to quote and use in our life, and we're asking this question, is that, does it really mean what we think it means? And this is a very popular one. Maybe you have quoted that. Maybe you have said, Jesus, I'm, I'm asking you this. You said it in your word, and um, you've, maybe he's not done exactly what you thought he should do. How is it that we understand Scripture? Um, last week, we talked about three ways for us to understand Scripture. I'm, I'm going to reiterate those in just a moment. I, I want to bring your attention to, if you're interested... If you're interested in studying the Bible and learning how to interpret Scripture, how, to, how is it that you can understand what verses mean, then I, I want to recommend to you a book, all right? It's a great book. It's, it's a, a book called Living by the Book. It's by Howard G. Hendricks. And um, it's a great book. It, it looks a little bit thick, but it's, it's more of a workbook. It, it's not something that you just sit down and read in one setting, but it's something that you can begin to read. And, and Howard uh, walks you through, and, and it's not necessarily in a, it doesn't use a lot of scholarly language, and he walks you through how it is to interpret and understand Scripture. And so if you're out there and you're interested in that kind of thing, um, you can find it on Amazon, uh, Living by the Book. It's great. I've, I've done this several times. It even has a workbook that you can order with it. I highly recommend, um, highly recommend ordering that. So how is it that we understand Scripture? There's, there's three things that we want to look for. The first one is this. We want to look at the context around the Scripture. Th this is what Howard would, would call the observation and the interpretation stage. You want to look at the, the context. You, you want to see what is, what is going on around this Bible verse. Who, who wrote it? Who was it written to? You, you want to look at the, 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 the passages following the verse and the ones that come before it. And you, you want to look for themes, anything that comes out. Okay, you want to look at the, the context. We're going to do that today. A second thing that you want to do when you're looking to understand Scripture is you want to compare Scripture with Scripture. So uh, Scripture, it's not going to con contradict itself. So to understand what one verse means, you might need to go to other places in Scripture to understand more about those verses. And, and we're going to do that today as well. We're going to use Scripture to help us understand a little bit more about what Jesus might have meant when he said, ask anything in my name and I will do it. Uh, and number three, when you're trying to understand Scripture verses, it's very important that you live what you learn from Scripture. Like it's not meant, the Bible's not meant to just be read. It's, it's meant to be applied to our life and, and to be lived out. And so uh, that's what we're going to do today. All right, very, those three things. We're going to look at the context. We're going to use Scripture to see what, this could mean here, and then we're going to talk about the application. So if you're with me, uh, here we go. Let's talk about the context of, of um, John chapter 14. Jesus is nearing the finish line. This is the night before he would go and he would give up his life on the cross, the night before he would be crucified. And what he's done is he's taken his followers, his disciples, and he's taken them to this upper room and we're, 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 they're going to do some things. They're going to observe Passover. They're going to, he's going to speak to them. And he's, he's going to do two things. He's going to uh, in, encourage them. All right, it's very important. He's going to comfort them. And he's going to prepare them. 
Okay, so he's, he's comforting, he's encouraging, and he's getting them ready. He's preparing them for his departure. Um, he's in this upper room. It's, it's what a, a lot of Bible scholars designate this portion of Scripture as the upper room discourse. It, it's, it's, it's unique to John. Like, you, you won't read this kind of thing anywhere else in the Gospels. John picks this up, um, and it, it kind of starts at chapter 13. In chapter 13, Jesus is preparing them. He's demonstrating to them this love that he wants them to carry on. He shows them the love that he wants them to have for other people and the love that he wants them to have for each other by doing something. Very significant. What does he do? He, he washes their feet. That's what Jesus does. In chapter 13, Jesus is going to talk about one of them is going to betray him. Now, he's not going to call him out. He's not going to you know, set him apart, but he's just going to say, hey, listen, just want you to know that one of you here is, you're going to turn your back on me. You're going to betray me. That was a little bit un unnerving for them. He says to Peter, you're going to betray me. You're, you're going to deny me, Peter. This all happens in chapter 13. You get over to chapter 14, and he's encouraging them, don't, don't be alarmed, but I'm, guess what? I'm getting ready to leave you. I'm going to this, this place that you can't go, and I'm, I'm going to go there to prepare a place for you, but it's okay you're going to be okay. In fact, you're going to be better, which is a very unique statement that Jesus would make. It's, it's better that I leave you, he says, because you're going to receive this, this helper. This helper is going to come, and obviously he's talking about the Holy Spirit. It's going to come, and he's going to be with you. And that's where we find ourselves at verse 13. Jesus makes this statement. We'll read it again. I want you to look for the, the highlighted portion of Scripture. Whatever you ask in my name, Jesus says, whatever you ask, this I will do. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. See that? If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. Anything. Now, there's two, um, two things I want you to notice about those two verses, okay? The first one is the word ask. Whenever we ask God something, what are we doing? Whenever we talk to God, we're asking him something. Well, it's not a trick question. Well, what are we doing? We're praying. So, he, first of all, we get this idea that, that prayer is going to be talked about. This is, this is what he's talking about here, prayer. Um, there is a, there's a main character in this whole thing. There's the, the main subject here. Uh, Jesus says it. He says that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Jesus was always about the Father. And, and we typically will read this and we want to make it about ourselves. That's not Jesus. Jesus is helping us to see that there's a main subject and it's not us, it's God. In fact, we, we understand this by just reading chapter 14. You, you read chapter 14 and you see all of this. I'll, I'll give you some examples. In verse 1, he says, believe in God. Believe also in me. He, he's bringing out the Father. Verse 2, he says, In my Father's house are many rooms. The Father, again, oh, God. We're going to keep talking about God. Verse 6, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to me except, so no one comes to me through me, to the Father except through me, right? The Father, he brings that to light. Verse 7, he says, If you know me, you know the Father. Verse 9, he says, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Like You, you get the idea that there's a, there's a main subject here. It's not us. It's the Father. Verse 10, he says, for I am in the Father, and he is in me. Verse 11, he'll repeat the very same thing that he just said. Verse, and then in verse 12, he'll say, I'm, I'm going to the Father. Like, it's just all about the Father. The Father is the subject of this text. It's like we get this idea that, that Jesus is saying, I, you, you can ask whatever you want in prayer as long as it has to do with the Father. Like prayers, they're, they're answered based on that connection with God. Now, this is important because right here is where many times we'll miss 
We'll, we'll, we'll miss the whole point of this. We'll miss God on all this. Because we read this, this passage of Scripture like this, and we see where Jesus says, ask anything in my name and I'll do it. And so we pray and we ask, and he doesn't do it. And, and, and we get all mad and puffed up and think, well, hold on a minute. Why didn't you? God, you didn't respond to me. I, I prayed. You didn't listen. It's like you're not doing anything about it. You must not care. Or you must not be real. And and we'll walk away. Maybe there's some of you, you're here today, and there was something that you were praying about over and over and over again. And because you didn't get a response, you just gave up on God. It's important to understand that when we look at this passage of Scripture, Jesus is making this about the Father. Very important to understand. Now that we know the context of what is going on, let's look at Scripture. I want to do this. I want to look at some different Bible verses that relate specifically to prayer. Okay, different Bible verses so that we can gain a little bit of understanding more about prayer. We know that Jesus is talking about bringing glory to God. That, that's, why we, that's why we're here. That's why we exist. We exist to serve and to glorify God. That's, that's for all of us. But when it comes to praying, well, what is it that we can learn from Scripture? Like, how do we do it? What do we look for as we pray? If you're taking notes, you can write some, some verses down. Um, a, a few of these I'll read to you. Others I'll just talk about. One I'll read to you is Mark chapter 11, verse 25. This is what Scripture says. These are the words of Jesus. And whenever you stand, pray. Now, we're, we're reading Scripture to learn about prayer. And whenever you stand praying, Jesus says, forgive. If you have anything against anyone, so that your Father also, who is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. So we start to see right here, Jesus is connecting forgiveness in prayer. It's a very important theme. We're going to see this all throughout Scripture. Matthew chapter 5, verse 23 and 24. Jesus is talking about when we bring a a, a gift to, to the altar, when we bring our offering there and, you, and, and you're at the altar, you have your, 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 your gift and you remember that someone has something against you. In this passage, he's going to say, leave it there. Leave it and go make things right. Like it's very important. Forgiveness starts to become a theme. In 1 John chapter 4, verse 20, John tells us that, that you cannot love God and hate your brother. Like he would say this. He would say, how is it that you can, you can hate someone that you can see, but you can say that you love someone that you can't? Like, th- th- we just see this, this theme in Scripture that forgiveness is very important. In fact, that's how we come up to the, the very first point that I want to make today. When it is that, that we're, when we're praying, what is it that we look for? We look for damaged relationships. Some of you are here today and... and you're wondering why it is that your prayers just seem to hit the ceiling. They don't, need to, they don't seem to go any further. It, it could be that you have a damaged relationship in your life. Now, um, husbands, wives, very important that you keep looking forward. Okay, don't, I don't want you, especially wives, I don't want you to elbow your husbands. But just listen to this Bible verse, okay? You can write this one down. You can use it later on him. But in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 7... This is what Scripture says. Husbands, live with your wives in an understanding way. Some of you are like, okay, now he's preaching. Right? Now, live with your wives in an understanding way. Show honor to the woman as the weaker vessel, since they are heirs with you of the grace of life, so that your prayers, what? What does Peter say? So that your prayers will not be hindered. So there's a, there's a direct correlation between our relationship with our spouse and our prayer life. Like relationships, they, they really are important. Damaged ones seem to, seem to do something to our prayer life, you know? I wonder how many of us are here and, and, and maybe on the way to church today. You're fighting. Understand that that, that little, you know, argument... That controversy that you've got going on, that, that just the, the, the fighting amongst you, 
it could very well affect your prayer life. It's very important. When we pray, we've got to look for damaged relationships. Scripture goes on also to say in James chapter 4, if you've got to write this one down, James chapter 4, this is what the Bible says, you ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly. There, there appears to be a, a right way to ask and a wrong way to ask. The wrong way is, James says it, to spend it on your own passions. He's like, you're making your prayers all about you. How many of us do that? My hand's up. Jesus, you, you read through Scripture, and he talks about this. He would call out the religious leaders who would stand out in the marketplaces, and they would pray these, these loud, long prayers and, and just to try to impress people. And he would call them out. Like, like your, your, your motives, they're not pure. I wonder how many times we pray and we ask something of God, but it's, we're asking with these dangerous motives. You know how dangerous it is when we get to praying, right? Especially with a prayer or with a scripture verse like this where Jesus would say, pray anything in my name. Just ask me anything in my name and I'll do it. It's dangerous. Uh, Jesus, I, I know I didn't study for um, the test, the exam today, but in your name, please help me get an 83. I just want an 83. I don't deserve it. I didn't try, but please. I mean, you see how this would work. We read and we see that our, our motives matter. So when we're praying, what do we do? We look for damaged relationships. We look for dangerous motives that we have in our life. Uh, scripture goes on. James, James has got some good ones. In uh, chapter 1, verse 6 and 7, listen to what he says. But let me, let him ask in faith with no doubting. What is he talking about here? He's, he's talking about asking. He's talking about praying. Let him ask in faith with no doubting. For the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. For that person must not suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. Like, there's something going on here. You, you, you can't ask and then doubt that God's going to do it for you. How many times have we gone to God about something and we're, we're, just, we're just unsure? Like, I don't know if you're going to do this or not, but let me ask. I mean, God's not moved by that. We see in Scripture. In Matthew chapter 8, it's a really cool story about a centurion soldier. This centurion soldier has a, um, a slave that's paralyzed. And, and this soldier loves this slave so much that he comes to Jesus and he talks to Jesus about this, this, this paralyzed servant that is suffering. And he's like, please, Jesus, heal him. Heal him. And Jesus says immediately, I'll come. I'll come heal. And, and the, the centurion says, no, you don't even have to do that, Jesus. Just say the word and he'll be healed. Well, Scripture says... That Jesus' response to that was, whoa, like, I've not seen such great faith like this. And that faith healed the centurion servants. Flip over one chapter to chapter 9, Matthew chapter 9. There's these two blind guys, and they approach Jesus and ask him, Jesus, will you heal us? And the very first thing that Jesus says to them is, well, do you believe? And they said, yes. And Jesus re replies with this, well, according to your faith, you're healed. Like there's this, this idea that, that we can't come to Jesus as we doubt in him. There's a, a story in Mark chapter 9 where this father, and I, I could, as a parent, I just I put myself in his, uh, you know, in his, his situation where he's got a son and his, his son is is possessed by this evil spirit and the the spirit keeps throwing him down and 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 trying to harm him he's going he has seizures he has all this stuff happening to him and the father just comes to Jesus and said you know Jesus if if you can it, like would you heal my son and I love Jesus's response I'll show you this one in verse 23 Jesus said to him if you can I just imagine Jesus is like a little sarcasm, maybe. Maybe just, if I can, really? And he says, all things are possible for one who believes. 
like all things. What is it when we're praying? What do we look for when we're praying? We, we, well, we look for damaged relationships. We look for dangerous motives. And number three, we look for doubting faith. Do you ever ask God something and then doubt that he will do it? That has an effect on our prayer life. Let's keep reading. In um, 1 John chapter 5, we're going to learn something else about prayer. Scripture says this, and uh, this is the confidence that we have towards him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have the request that we have asked him for. Well, what do we see here in this passage? John talks about the confidence when we come to to God in prayer, when we come to him, if we ask in confidence and anything we ask in his will, what, what do we look for when we pray? We look for God's desires instead of our own. I wonder how many times we go to God and we're looking for his desires. We want to find his desires. See, we, we don't just ask him for whatever we want. Like, God, just, you know, give me and just start listing things. Now, God doesn't exist for us. We exist to serve and to glorify him. And so when we come to this passage of Scripture where Jesus said, and we'll read it again, whatever you ask in my name, this I will do. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, Jesus says, I will do it. He's not delivering a magical formula for getting whatever it is that we want. He's giving us a guiding principle to align our desires with God's. In fact, um, if you want a key thought for today, if you don't hear anything else I say Hear this. We don't pray for God to give us what we want. We pray to want what God gives us. So you have a loving God. And maybe you're here today and the things that you've been praying for you don't like. You just don't like it. You don't, you don't like what he's giving you. You don't like the, the, the response. Understand something. We don't pray so that we can get what it is, get what we want. We pray so that we can want what it is that he's giving us. You think about this whole, this whole passage of Scripture. We're able to do that. We have access to God because of Jesus. It's because of him. So, so when we pray in Jesus' name, it's like we're standing there in Jesus' place. We didn't earn it, but because of Jesus, he, he brings us in and he places us there. And he's like, there you go. You, you have access to the Father. There's nothing you did, but there he is. There he is. Let's talk to him. I've read this this week so many times. And every time I go to pray now, it's like, okay, God, I, I, I don't want to. I don't want to mess this thing up. You know, God, I so often make things about me. How do I, I want to make it about you, God? What, what is your will? How often, though, do we ask that? What about your will, God? What about your will? Do you sometimes feel like God is not listening? Like your prayers are hitting the ceiling? They're not going anywhere? It might be because you've made prayer all about you. It's just all about you. Why don't you try switching it? Switch from your will to his will. Because we don't, we don't pray so that we can get something from God like that. That's, that's not what we're doing. We, we pray 
we pray so that we can want what it is that God is giving us. And the more you pray, I can't explain this, but the more you pray, the more you talk to Him, the more your desires and His desires will begin to align. The more your faith will grow, the stronger you'll become. When you don't make it about you, and you make it about Him. Will you bow your heads? Will you close your eyes? No one, no one looking around. I, I just want to ask you, um, maybe you're here today and, and you're in a situation where you need God's power. You just need it. You need it to be active in your life. You need Him to move. And, and, and maybe there's something that has been said today um, that you, you start to understand, you start to get this idea of why it is that you might not see Him move. Maybe for you, it, it's, there's a, there is some, a damaged relationship in your life and you've been trying to go on without tr- repairing it. It, it could be a, a dangerous motive in your life. Like it's just, you just don't have a pure motive there. Your, your faith may be weak. Or maybe you've just been wanting God to, to bend to your will instead of you to His. But you see it now. You see it. If you're here and you would say, you know what, Pastor? I don't, I don't want to get something from God. I know I, I don't want to get something from Him. I just, I just want to understand what he wants from me. Like I hear you say he's a good God. I I hear you say he's a loving God. There's there's a really big need in my life and I just want I just want to hear him speak to me. I just want to hear him speak. Man, if that's you, I want to pray for you. We're in this thing together. If that's your story, would you just slip up your hand? Just for a moment, I just want to hear him speak. I just want to know, I just want to know what it is that he wants for my life. Just hold your hand up for just a moment. Just hold it up, just so I can see it. Just hold it up for just a moment. Yeah. Thank you for your honesty. You can, you can put it right back down. There are others of you, you're here in person or you're on the other side of a, a screen. And as, you know, as we talk about what God wants to give us, I want you to think about this. He wants, there's something that he wants to give us every time that we ask. Like no matter when you ask, this is, he's gonna do something for you and this is what it is. Whenever you ask him to forgive you of your sins, listen, he will do it. He will do it. And there's some of you, you're, you're here and like, You've never done that. You've never looked at God and and recognized the fact that you're a sinner, that you need to repent of your sins, turn from your sins. You've never asked him to forgive you of your sins. And so therefore today, if you were to, to die right now and stand before him, here's the deal. You would spend eternity apart from him because you're not forgiven. Why don't you do this today? Why don't you? Repent of your sins and trust Jesus Christ to save you. Like wherever you are, why don't you do that? You you might say, well, pastor, I I don't know. How how do I do that? Here's the deal. I'm going to walk you through it. Are you ready? Here's all you got to do. Just call out on him and ask him to save you. Just pray this prayer with me. Say something like this. Just say, dear Jesus, I believe that you are the son of God. Go ahead and tell him that. I believe. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. So today I'm asking you to please forgive me. I'm turning from my life of sin. I'm turning towards a life with you. I surrender all that I am to you right now, Jesus. Go ahead and tell him that I surrender my life to you. I'm all yours. I'm all yours. Listen, if that was your prayer, if that was your conversation with him, let me tell you what just happened. Your sins are forgiven. Jesus Christ now lives inside of you. Right now, you're saved, you're forgiven. You now have an eternal home in heaven. And if that was your prayer, wherever you are, this is what I'm gonna ask you to do. I'm gonna ask you to tell somebody. And I want it to start with me. Wherever you are, would you do this? 
that was your prayer, would you just lift up your hand? Just lift it up right now. And by you lifting it, this is what you're saying, Pastor, I just prayed that prayer. Wherever you are, just lift it up right now. Lift it up and hold it up. Just hold it up. Hold it up for just a moment. Hold it up. Hold it up. Thank you so much. Those of you that are on the other side of a screen, you can lift your hand as well. If you're an online church, you can click the hand raised emoji or you, you can uh, follow the, 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 the links in the chat rooms. You've got to tell somebody that you receive Jesus. We're in this thing together. We're so in this thing together. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, I pray that as we come to you in the name of Jesus, that we would know that this is a privilege that we did not earn. But because of Jesus, we can stand before you. Father, some walked in today or they're listening on the other side of a screen and, and, and they've been praying and talking to you for a long time thinking that you're not listening or they're not seeing anything work. And today, I believe that you've spoken to them and you've told them why. So help us. Help us to get the relationships right. Help us to get our motives and make them pure. Lord, build our faith that we don't doubt you. And oh, I pray. I pray that we would seek your will, not ours. God, thank you that we can come boldly before you and know that you are loving us, that you hear us, and Lord, we can trust in you. I pray all of this in the mighty name of Jesus and all of God's people said, amen, amen. Listen, I wanna tell you something. If you pray that prayer, there's a phone number that I'm gonna ask you to send a text message to. It's gonna come up right behind me. There it is. Just send this message. I said yes to that phone number. Those of you that are on the other side of a screen, do the same thing. Let me tell you something about that number. That doesn't go to anyone except for me. It comes straight to me. No one else is gonna see that. I'm gonna send you a message. Um, I'm gonna communicate with you. I want to walk through this, this decision that you've made to follow Jesus with you. Also, I wanna say if you're here and you need prayer, I'm gonna let you use that number as well. I would be honored to pray for you. And I promise you I'll do this. I will pray for you. I promise you I'll do that. So listen, church, thank you for being a part of the